Okay, thanks. Thanks, Lenny. So in our co-authored book project, Psychoanalysis and Revolution, Critical Psychology for Liberation Movements, David Pavon Coyel and I articulate psychoanalysis with the practice of left movements. So we're addressing activists in a number of different movements ranging from explicitly anti-capitalist groups to ecological, indigenous and feminist networks. And we're using the signifier critical psychology here strategically to speak about psychoanalysis. We're concerned with practice and here political practice, but we know that there's no direct unmediated practice as such that it must be mediated either explicitly or implicitly by a theory of the world and a theory of the human subject. If it's not explicit, reflected upon, worked through, then that mediation is usually by default ideological. So the conceptual underpinnings of the project are more specific than the title of the book indicates because of the theoretical and practical commitments that we both have to Lacan and Marx. So I'm going to frame this examination of the connection between the two as Lacanian psychoanalysis and Marxism, which is a little different from anchoring the work in the writings or the pronouncements or worse, the supposed intentions of the two authors. Lacan and Marx are, of course, at the core of this, and all the more so because the two traditions, clinical practice, political practice, obsessively return to what is present or absent in these writers' texts. Here, I'm going to outline some similarities and differences between Lacanian psychoanalysis and Marxism. So let's start with the similarities and attend to the way each apparent similarity includes a twist, something that doesn't quite correspond to what the putative rival partner is up to. 